If you were asked to list what you know about Argentina, what would you say? Besides Messi and Maradona, how would you describe Argentina? Do you think of the world's poorest neighborhoods or perhaps the tango dance born from the lower social classes? Maybe Argentina evokes thoughts of a place where you can find friendly people on a tight budget and enjoy an endless nightlife. Or perhaps you're a food enthusiast and you're well aware of the asado barbecue frenzy in this country, where some of the world's most delicious beef is raised, despite not caring about money in your pocket. Argentina is the land of those who can enjoy meat and dance wildly. However, Argentina is not limited to just these aspects. It's a country that goes beyond all of these. It stretches down towards the southern tip of the world, where it's often referred to as the end of the world, all the way to Ushuaia, where the sun doesn't shine as you head further south. For instance, Ushuaia indeed holds the title of the southernmost city in the world. Below this, there are living spaces, but they are primarily military bases or research stations for scientists. In other words, Argentina is located just above the world's largest and massive glaciers. Glaciers lies just a bit further south. So, let's start with football and try to understand the details of life in Argentina. Firstly, this is truly a place where football legends are born and the roots of world stars grow. You probably know that Messi spent most of his football life in Spain, Barcelona. What about Maradona? Do you know exactly where the Maradona legend played her football in Argentina? Here's the Boca Juniors Stadium where Maradona shone, and this is their biggest rivals, River Plate. They are considered the world's fieriest and biggest derby. Whenever these two teams face off in Argentina, it's as if a world war breaks out among the fans. Whoever wins between these two teams turns the Obelisco Square in the capital Buenos Aires into a carnival area. Remember, Argentina won the last World Cup a few months ago and Messi dedicated the trophy to his country. On that day, Obelisco Square in Argentina was filled with more people than even the largest rallies and the streets were closed to traffic. So even if you go to Argentina just for a visit, Obelisco is one of the symbolic places you must see. It holds the same value for Buenos Aires as the Eiffel Tower does for Paris. It was built in the 1930s and adds visual richness to the city. Now let's talk about Boca Juniors, one of the city's two biggest clubs. This is what the stadium looks like from above. To be honest, it doesn't look very impressive. The stadium is old and not suitable for expansion. In fact, homeowners and shop owners in the nearby La Boca neighborhood refuse to sell their properties. Carrying anything red inside or near the stadium is also prohibited because red and white are the colors of River Plate and represent hatred for Boca Juniors. For example, Coca-Cola sponsors this team, but they are forbidden from advertising inside the stadium using the color red. So the love for football in Argentina is unlike anywhere else in the world. People are incredibly passionate and they prioritize football over their economy. In Maradona's team, fans call themselves the 12th man. This is their way of expressing that they are united with the 11 players on the field and that they are one big family. Argentina has a neighborhood system. Each neighborhood looks after its own people and has its own rules. You must adapt to and follow the customs of the neighborhood you are in. For instance, if you have an argument with someone, the wrongdoing is not seen as against you personally, but against your neighborhood. This leads to conflicts between neighborhoods. Or if electricity is being used illegally in your neighborhood, you should also use it illegally and not report it to the police. This is why Buenos Aires isn't as rosy as it may seem. Additionally, people there constantly consume a plant that they are almost addicted to. They call it mate and they describe it as a kind of tea. Nearly every Argentine is addicted to this plant. It contains caffeine and has a stimulating effect on the body. It's not just regular folks. Even billionaires like Messi can't do without this plant. The plant, called mate, grows on the borders of Brazil and Uruguay, but is incredibly easy to consume. You mix it with hot water, shake it, and then sip it using a regular straw. What's strange is that this plant is said to have been brought into these lands from outside in the 1920s and began to be cultivated in Argentina. 
Today, the people who consume this plant the most after Argentina are Syrians. Following them are Jordanians and Lebanese. Another thing that Argentines are very proud of is their caramel. When you look at it from afar, you might think it's a kind of peanut butter. But no, it's caramel, and according to Argentines, the most delicious caramel in Latin America is produced in Argentina. It tastes just like regular caramel, but much denser and lingers in your mouth. You can find these Argentine caramels called Dulce de Leche in almost any store. Another mouth-watering experience in the country is their barbecue called Asado. Perhaps you've seen restaurants called Asado in your own country. Well, their origins are actually in Argentina. This country, which feeds its cows with some of the world's finest grass, ranks third in the list of the most delicious beef. They have created a national dish called Asado by grilling the back part of the cow, which is one of the most delicious parts of the animal. They separate the meat from the bones and enjoy it alongside every dish, including hamburgers. Especially in the capital, there's a place called Don Julio, and they've become masters of this craft. They've been recognized as one of the top 10 restaurants in the world for six consecutive years, and even Messi goes to that place to have asado. They use the world's finest cattle feed, produced by a Saudi Arabian company called Al Marai, and they slaughter the cattle fed with these feeds to serve their customers. If you walk the streets of Argentina and look closely at the faces of the people, you'll see that many of them resemble Europeans. Indeed, 51% of Argentinians are actually of Italian descent. The rest are composed of Spaniards who settled in these lands after the colonial years and the local Native Americans. They identify themselves as Argentinians and don't have an obsession with their origins. The wealthier ones among them live by the Tigre Canal in the capital. Expensive houses have been built around this canal for the wealthy in Buenos Aires and they are encouraged to live here. When viewed from above, the city is divided by the canal and connected to each other by artificial bridges. In this way, it's somewhat reminiscent of Amsterdam. This canal that divides the city is not artificial, it's a natural river. One sad detail in the capital is the segregation of the rich in one area and the poor in another. This class distinction exists in Argentina as it does everywhere in the world. For example, right next to the train tracks, there's a neighborhood called Villa 31, and they consider it equivalent to the favelas in Brazil. In fact, it's considered the most dangerous and poorest neighborhood in Argentina. The narrow streets are filled with police officers, and you should leave all your valuables in your hotel before entering. Every street corner is filled with unsightly cables and unpainted brick houses. The cables have been randomly thrown there by the poor locals, because with those cables, they're actually stealing electricity from the neighboring districts. Also, shanties are stacked on top of each other and a different family lives on each floor. There's no internal stair system for them to move up and down within the building. Therefore, they go up and down the floors using fire escape stairs. If you need protection from a police officer, you can only shoot comfortably in that way. But when you look at their faces, they actually look innocent. Because they're forced to live there due to impossibilities, it's evident in everything they do. The only common point that brings together the poor and the rich under the same roof in the country is, of course, football. Until 1930, Argentina was one of the world's wealthiest countries. However, since 2001, it has been battling hyperinflation. The children of those who migrated to this country during its affluent periods are now seeking ways to move away from Argentina in pursuit of a better economy. In the capital, you'll find black market money changers on every street corner, shouting cambio cambio. Their business is to exchange dollars at more appealing rates than the official exchange rate making a profit. As a result, Argentina, along with Venezuela and Zimbabwe, leads the list of countries where currency is at its least valuable. One US dollar officially equals 820 pesos, and salaries in the country are only around $400. In the black market, however, you can exchange one dollar for up to 1,000 pesos. If you make a credit card purchase at a store in Argentina, you're making a big mistake. This is because using a credit card will result in your money being withdrawn at the official rate. In Argentina, you should exchange your dollars for a higher rate with black market money changers and make cash purchases in stores. But do Argentinians give up the pleasures of life despite their terrible economy? 
Of course not. They even have a dance born from the lower class, and they call it tango. This dance, originating from the slums of Argentina, eventually became famous through local performances and then spread worldwide, becoming one of Argentina's cultural heritages. If tango seems too dull for you, Buenos Aires nightlife is more than enough to take your mind off all your troubles. The claim that the most well-groomed people in Latin America are in Argentina also appears to be true, despite the devalued currency. Moreover, despite the currency's low value, there are always lines at nightclubs. Even around three in the morning, people in Argentina don't seem to want to stop the fun. It seems that Argentinians, despite all the negatives, don't neglect music and glamorous lives. This is the grave of San Martin, whom Argentinians consider their father. In his time, he liberated Argentina, Peru and Chile from the Spaniards, ensuring the freedom of these three countries. As we approach the end of the video, we can't forget to talk about Argentina and mention Patagonia. This is the southernmost region of Chile and Argentina. The world's southernmost city is right here, and trips to Antarctica are often planned from this region. It's a place that's desolate, quiet and tranquil, far away from people and technology, nestled among glaciers and frozen mountains. From above, it resembles the Himalayas, and in the midst of all this natural beauty, this city in the midst of the aridness offers a sign of life. Just imagine living right next to glaciers. And the Andes Mountains, they truly look magnificent and have a soothing effect on one's soul. Argentina is an affordable and fun country to live in. However, it might be one of the last countries you'd consider going to in order to make a living. Let's discuss their daily challenges and the way they live. First and foremost, when you think of Argentina, you should picture a vast expanse of land. When you look at the country on a world map, it may seem tall and slim. However, compared to European countries, it's genuinely enormous. Argentina covers a massive 2,780,000 square kilometers of land. But Argentina is not the largest country in South America. Brazil has a land area of 8.5 million square kilometers, approximately three times the size of Argentina. Within this vast area, only 45 million people call Argentina home. This low population density, especially considering the size of the land, is something to note. Argentina shares its borders with Chile to the west, Bolivia and Paraguay to the north, Brazil and Uruguay to the east. The country operates under a presidential system within a federal republic. This means it isn't governed solely by the words of one individual. The capital city of the country is Buenos Aires, one of the most popular and frequently mentioned cities in Argentina. If you wish to explore Argentina, you can easily find flights from all over the world to Argentina. However, most of these flights involve layovers. This means that airlines typically gather passengers from various parts of the world and then drop you all off in Argentina simultaneously. The good news is that Argentina doesn't require visas for travelers from many countries. Now, when we delve into the details of life in the country, it's important to note that there is no distinct Argentine language spoken in Argentina. Spanish is the official language of Argentina. While the middle-aged and older population hardly knows English, it is more commonly spoken by the younger generation. The reason for the prevalence of Spanish in the country is, of course, rooted in Spain's history of having a profit-focused economic system during its colonization. During those years, the first colonies were established in Argentina, initiating a long period of exploitation that lasted until the 1800s. Over time, even their own populations were transported to these lands. As a result, the Spanish language became deeply ingrained in the fabric of this country and language assimilation took place. In 1976, Argentina found itself in a dispute with the British. 
Both Argentina and the UK came right over the nearby Falkland Islands. In the war that followed, Argentina suffered significant losses and was defeated by the British. As a result, despite more than 40 years having passed since the war, the people of Argentina have not given up their claim on the Falkland Islands. They consider the British to be occupying their own lands and have turned this into a national struggle. While the British claim to be the first to discover the Falkland Islands, Argentina maintains that these islands were inherited from the Spanish. However, if you were to visit the Falkland Islands today and observe the local population, all 3,000 islanders consider themselves British and support the UK. The sustainability of life on the island is in fact maintained with financial support from the UK. I've provided a detailed account of the Falkland issue to suggest that if you ever find yourself in Argentina, it's best to avoid discussing the Falklands. People become uneasy and agitated when this issue comes up, especially never exhibit behaviors that praise the UK and Argentina, or at the very least, avoid walking around in a UK jersey. On the other hand, Argentina has bigger problems. The country has been plagued by never-ending political instability and economic issues for years, reducing people's prosperity and their quality of life. Inflation has long surpassed double digits and at times even exceeds 100%. This means that the purchasing power of the population is decreasing day by day, and the value of their money is nearly non-existent. You can think of the average adult salary in the country as around $500. So if you have a supplementary income of approximately $1,000 per month and you wish to move to Argentina, you can live very comfortably there, my friends. People are managing to get by with even $300. If you wonder how they can do this, well, except for the capital city, rents and bills in many parts of the country are at very reasonable levels compared to global standards. For instance, if you want to rent a one-bedroom apartment in Mar del Plata, a coastal city in Argentina, you'll find the average rent to be around $150. If you plan to live alone, you can even rent a studio apartment for as low as $100. The total cost for your electricity, water, gas, and internet bills will vary between $50 and $60 at the most. Of course, if you have a larger family, expenses increase accordingly. The monthly grocery shopping for a two-person household typically ranges from $70 to $80. At least there's a balance in the country. So if people earn $400, the rent for their house doesn't become $400. In contrast, when you look at economically struggling countries around the world today, you find people earning the minimum wage and yet having to pay more than the minimum wage for rent. It seems that the Argentine government, although unable to find a permanent solution to inflation, has managed to adjust living costs according to people's incomes. Nevertheless, the government continues to print money constantly and this crisis doesn't seem to end. People try to convert their pesos into dollars as much as possible and save. That's because the dollar never loses against the peso and provides a sense of security to the Argentine people. For example, if someone who wants to buy a house saves in pesos, they can never afford the house they want because the peso's value is constantly increasing. However, if they save in dollars, the house's price remains the same. So if a house costs $100,000 today, it will continue to be on $100,000 10 years from now. Therefore, life is tough for the average person in Argentina. The country has high unemployment and purchasing power is equally low. Politicians can't solve these problems, which leaves the people unhappy. This increasing unhappiness among the people further fuels chaos and rising crime rates in the country. Even in the capital Buenos Aires, there are dozens of dangerous neighborhoods where nobody dares to enter. The economic instability in the country, combined with its geographical remoteness, makes Argentina far from being a preferred destination. That's why Argentina is not chosen by the global community for either tourism or permanent living. In fact, not only does Argentina not receive immigration from abroad, but its own citizens also leave the country when they succeed in any field. The football sector is one of the most vivid examples of this. From a young age, the biggest dream of the kids in this country is to become a footballer like Messi, Maradona and dozens of other great Argentine stars and achieve a rich life in Europe. This situation also applies to Brazilian kids 
because the country has really weak job sectors compared to the modern world. The country's general economy relies on agriculture and agriculture-based industries. They can't produce and sell any technology to the outside world. They don't have any globally recognizable major brands of their own. Thus, the country's production line is very weak, and almost everything related to the modern world comes ready-made from abroad. The foreign currencies in the country are constantly going out, and there is no foreign currency coming into the country which continuously raises inflation and drags the Argentine peso's value even lower. Actually, Argentina is a country of extreme contradictions. Despite having so much inflation and economic problems, even a picture of a country where crime rates are high and there are hungry people everywhere. You can think, is there a crisis here? When you enter the nightlife of the capital, because these people never give up having fun and they never compromise on the pleasure of living, no matter how much of a crisis they are in. The streets of Buenos Aires are overflowing with hundreds of people in front of the venues. When you look at people's faces, their attire or their tables, you can clearly see that they never hold back from having fun and enjoying life. If you have money just like anywhere in the world, you can easily draw people's attention in Argentina. Especially women here really love to have fun, and there are thousands of men coming from abroad to meet Argentine women. That's why Argentine people take extra care of themselves and are always warm. From here, one can make the deduction that Argentina is a country that's all about consumption. People make ends meet, they barely make it through the end of the month, but they never hold back from having fun, spending and consuming. Particularly, the young generation in the country lives life on a daily basis, focusing on savoring the moment. As for their character, they are quite friendly. For example, it's pretty hard to come across direct racist words or actions here, unlike in Europe. On the contrary, they want to get to know you better. They have a bit of a sensitive and somewhat spoiled side. For example, they can make fun of both themselves and your appearance, turning it into entertainment. When you come across these kinds of jokes, they expect you to laugh it off. If you have a tough and serious disposition and can't take a joke, you might not find the Argentinian atmosphere too pleasant. Moreover, same-sex marriage has been legal in the country for more than 10 years. In nightclubs, on the street or out and about, you can see intimate people of the same sex side by side. You can also frequently see people of the opposite sex hugging and kissing. Although most of them have embraced Christianity, they are mostly open-minded and they don't shape their lives around religious rules. In other words, society determines its own moral rules and they have a free mindset if you want to leave the country's economic problems aside and enjoy Argentina, I'm sure the capital Buenos Aires will truly impress you. Because Argentina, unlike other South American countries, doesn't have a very chaotic, complex and disorderly urban structure. In fact, the architecture in their big cities is reminiscent of Europe, especially countries like Italy and Spain. The streets and roads are extremely clean and the architectural designs of the buildings exude an artistic feel. When you go there, you feel an ambience, as if you've gone to a European country rather than a South American one. The service and ambience in restaurants and markets give you the feeling of a developed country. The food they eat is generally European style, including pizza, pasta and pork. They are among the world's top consumers of beef, especially grilled beef. You can see their general culture and cleanliness even from the care they show on their streets. Let's not forget to talk about Argentina and tango. I must say that Argentina is the pinnacle of Latin dances. In particular, the tango dance is a highly noble and glamorous art form originating from this region. During your stay there, you might come across people who dance frequently. In summary, Argentina is a country known for its success in football and its dances. However, it can't seem to escape the economic crisis. Living in Argentina only makes sense if you earn in dollars. Otherwise, you might have to live a life of poverty, earning in pesos. If you can find a job that pays in dollars, you can enjoy all the benefits of the modern world in the clean, green cities that are no different from Europe, and you can open a new chapter in your life with the warm people you meet there. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.